How do you measure inflation? If I measure inflation against something I can manufacture for free, inflation doesn't look that high. If I measure inflation against a yardstick that is fixed, that's thermodynamically sound, then you see the true measure of inflation. S&P is one example of that. This is Miami Beach. Miami Beach runs 96 blocks. There's that much beach. A hundred years ago, there was that much beach. No amount of semiconductor technology or factories make more beach. The dollar has fallen 99.8% against the beach in a hundred years. That's how you start to see what's really going on with the world's strongest currency. Now I have some bad news for you. We're not in America. We're in another country. Foreign currencies are collapsing against the dollar. This is the Argentine peso against the dollar. In 20 years, the peso goes from 1 to 500. The peso has lost 99.8% of its value against the dollar at the same time that the dollar has lost 75% of its value against the S&P index. I let you do the math. The urgent message conveyed by Michael Saylor, the founder of MicroStrategy, is that without prompt action, you risk losing 99% of your wealth over an extended period. In what is arguably one of the most compelling keynotes ever, Saylor meticulously dissects and supports with precise data the ongoing collapse of currencies worldwide, including the US dollar. His ultimate point is clear. Embrace the strategy of purchasing and holding Bitcoin, the toughest form of money on earth, as it stands out as the sole victorious approach over an extended timeline. Ensure you watch the entire video, as this keynote is undoubtedly the most persuasive masterclass on Bitcoin you'll ever encounter. The world reserve currency is the dollar. It's collapsing against assets like the S&P index, like real estate, like gold, like art. And this is a sobering thought. Um, if we had sound money, the dollar wouldn't collapse. But you've probably seen this chart. This is the dollar collapsing against consumer goods. Consumer goods, you know, the dollar is 95% weaker. It means consumer goods are 20 times more expensive today than 100 years ago. Um, now, Consumer goods are manufactured items, candy bars, bottles of water, Netflix videos. They're, uh, they're things that are coming off an assembly line and they're getting stamped out with a low variable cost. This is the cheapest, least scarce stuff in the civilization. And yet it's 20 times more expensive. Now, a lot of times government officials show you this chart and they say, well, this is the impact of inflation. This, in fact, was generated by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But the sad fact of the matter is, this is as good as it's ever going to get for you. This is a different picture. What if it wasn't easy to stamp out manufactured biscuits or Netflix videos? What if you had to do work to dig the gold out of the ground? Gold is a bit harder. Uh, and so the dollar has collapsed 99% against gold in that same 100 years not 95%. By the way, gold is not scarce. We keep creating more gold. We get better at it, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a bit more scarce than, you know, Netflix videos, and it's a bit more scarce than drywall. Let's talk about something that's even more scarce. The 500 most valuable companies in the S&P. The US dollar has lost 99.8% of its value against the S&P index over that same 100 years. That is actually a closer measure to the inflation rate. This is the world's strongest currency. This is the currency backed by the country that won every war in the last 100 years. This is as good as it's going to get for you. This is as good as it gets, it will get worse. Now. How do you measure inflation? If I measure inflation against something I can manufacture for free, inflation doesn't look that high. If I measure inflation against a yardstick that is fixed, that's thermodynamically sound, then you see the true measure of inflation. S&P is one example of that. This is Miami Beach. 
Miami Beach runs 96 blocks. There's that much beach. A hundred years ago, there was that much beach. No amount of semiconductor technology or factories make more beach. The dollar has fallen 99.8% against the beach in a hundred years. That's how you start to see what's really going on with the world's strongest currency. Now I have some bad news for you. We're not in America. We're in another country. Foreign currencies are collapsing against the dollar. This is the Argentine peso against the dollar. In 20 years, the peso goes from 1 to 500. The peso has lost 99.8% of its value against the dollar at the same time that the dollar has lost 75% of its value against the S&P index. I let you do the math. If you run a company in Argentina and you're going to work hard, you're going to have to grow your revenues from 1 million pesos to 500 million pesos over 20 years to stand still. And that's why I say no amount of hard work is going to solve the problem of being on the wrong side of an economic war. There's only one strategy here. You have to get out of that peso. You have to exit. This is the lira. This is before this week. It lost 95% of its value. Now the number is about 97% of its value against the dollar. This is the rupee. It's lost 90% of its value against the dollar. So that 99.8% loss is another 90%. So we're kind of running out of numbers to calculate just how much of your wealth has gone from you to the government. When the government actually collapses the currency 99.9%, what it means is over 100 years, they in essence take all of your wealth and they redistribute it to their cronies, to, to whoever they want. And that's the rate at which it's going. This is Pakistan, 82% against the dollar. This is the Brazilian real, 65% against the dollar. Conclusion, if you want to preserve your wealth, you have to convert that currency into an asset that's scarce, desirable, portable, durable, and maintainable. Right? There, there are certain things that are scarce and desirable, but they don't move, like beachfront property. And by the way, maintainable... If you own a million dollars of property in Miami, you have to pay $20,000 a year, every year, to maintain it. And it gets, uh, it gets assessed up. So you have to have a million dollars to cover the taxes on a million dollars of property in Miami Beach over about 20 years. You can't maintain it. So you're gonna be a smart investor. Here's smart investors, people bragging about making money in the stock market. The S&P index is going up 7 to 8% a year. And so you must be really smart. You invested in companies that are making good decision. 